Advancement in technology and artificial intelligence has begun to turn what was once merely science fiction into near reality. So what factors determine which technologies will be good or bad in our digital future? A group of 250 thought leaders around the world have been working together to try to figure that out. They've come up with over 100 guiding principles to manage how humanity can be protected in the robot revolution. The University of Sydney's Professor Rafael Calvo took part in the second instalment of the Ethically Aligned Design Project. He joins us now in the studio. Rafael, thank you so much for your time, for waiting around for us this afternoon as well. Thank you so much. This is such a fascinating topic. Let's first start with these group of you around the world coming up with these recommendations. How do you even start to come up with these recommendations? Well, this uh, was organized by the Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers. Uh, the IEEE is the largest professional organization in technology. It has over 450,000 engineers around the world. Um, and the standards association with the IEEE decided that this was really important and coordinated the large committee. So. Uh, the first instance, it was a relatively small group of people, and then we extended to these 250. There are people from all over the world, every discipline. We had psychologists, sociologists, uh, philosophers, um, yeah, engineers. So you essentially come up with an issue, a concern, say, around how AI is going to affect our sort of human lives, and you work together to try and solve that issue, come up with some guidelines. What's an example of something that you've been tossing about? So. Uh, one that I think is particularly interesting here is uh, a TV set. Mm. If you have a smart TV with a camera, will it be ethical for the camera to recognize your emotions and then adapt the content based on what it recognizes? So if uh, it recognizes that you are sad, it might show you comedy or, or do something else, and sell, try to sell you something. Mm. Or if it shows that you are quiet, should it go to advertisement or to some particular type of content? or so depending on what's happening in the environment, the content be, will be adapted. Mm. So how would that be ethical? So you could design a system that, well, we think everything, uh, every system has to be transparent. So it needs to tell the users what is happening. Uh, so you will need to consent first to the camera and to the processing, and you will need to understand what is happening. Uh, you need to give consent, it's particularly important. And it's not as simple to do that. Uh, it will need to be accountable. So when something goes wrong, the company, either the manufacturer of the TV set or the TV network, someone has to be accountable for what happens. It also, you need to be able to switch it off. If mm. something goes wrong, you need to either switch off the camera, switch off the TV, and some of these systems are not trivial. So you've got an opt-out option. So it's all uh, around sort of transparency, consent, accountability, opting out, yes. having control over your environment. The ethical issues around anything, and good or bad, are so fluid in a sense, so grey, they're such grey areas anyway. When you're then applying that to AI, to robots, and how they interact with us as human beings, it's an extremely complex area. It's very difficult and it's so culturally dependent. Um, mm. That's why the committee brought people from all over the world, because you can make decisions just on what Silicon Valley believes. Uh, Australia or Asia or other countries have the right to bring their own cultures in the type of technologies that are going to be used because this is going to define who we are, how our children grow up, the kind of identities that each of us will feel. Uh, another example will be obviously robots. So robots that start spending a lot of time with our children. So we are already used to having our children spend hours on an iPad. Mm. What happens when they spend hours with a robot that learns about the characters? So some of the research studies show that the kids start getting very attached, emotionally attached to the robot. I got attached to WALL-E, just a movie, yeah. you know, right? <laughs> well, there you are. That's right. There's yeah. that anthropomorphic kind of yeah. adaptation that goes on. It's so fascinating. One of the things I really wanted to ask you was, um, you know, one of the kind of issues that came out of this was how do we protect sort of humanity? How do we protect ourselves from the robots? But one of the sort of alternative views of that is, are robots and our interaction with robots just simply part of our human evolution? Is this just part of the way in which we're mm. going as human beings and that that evolution is part of our evolution? Yeah, totally. I, I mean, uh, there are some questions that we would never have thought about even five years ago. Um, Saudi Arabia just gave uh, 
civil rights to a robot, mm. Sophia. And so it's treating a robot like a human. Will the robot be able to make other robots? Have baby robots? How would you distinguish one robot from the other? So, I mean, you and I are different. We have different passports and we, we can be identified as individuals and be responsible and treated legally as different entities. Uh, how would you do that with robots? <laughs> it's like a computer with a different like MAC address or... Um, so it gets complicated. The other principle that we think is really important is that all these robots, all these technologies have to be designed to support well-being. Right. If something has a negative effect on well-being, it will not be considered ethical. And the last one of the principles is that it has to respect human rights. A technology that enslaves us cannot be good, even if it increases productivity. A workplace technology, for example, that forces people to stay longer there mm. cannot be ethical. I'd argue that we're already enslaved by our little phones in our hands, but that's a totally different discussion. Yeah. Rafael Calvo, I could speak with you all day about this. Thank you so much for dropping in. Really appreciate it. Thank you for inviting me.